So here we are on the banks of Hardwick Smith's on the linear complex. Now, it's my first film out with the DNA guys, and I thought, where better than to come here, show you a few spring tactics, some baiting techniques, bits and pieces about rigs, and hopefully we'll catch a few scaly carp to show you. So we're in the swim, we're in peg six on Hardwick. I'm under the impression this is a really favourable swim. I know a lot of the time on the complex, a lot of fish this time of year are caught on zigs, but for me, I want to catch them over some bait and I want to try and build a bit of a hit. So out in front of me, I've had a bit of a lead about and I found a nice feature at 24 rod lengths. It's well in my water, so I don't want to get interfered with, which is obviously something to take into account on these lakes. So out there, I've had a plum and I found a bar that's around 12 foot. So the surrounding water is probably 18 to 20 feet. So it's got a massive draw in terms of the fish. At this time of the year, you're getting longer daylight hours, the sun's that little bit more intense. And I just think that water on top of the bar being a bit more shallow, it's gonna be a real magnet for the fish. So that's where I wanna concentrate my bait. In terms of bait, I haven't gone mad. Just introduced some eight mil bug, a bit of corn, and a little bit of particle. I didn't wanna go mad, probably put 12 spoms in. I'm just conscious that I wanted a few more bigger items like the boilies, I've kept them whole, and the corn. It's still quite deep out there, it's probably 12 foot, so I want it all to land nice and direct on my, on my rods. I don't want it drifting down the side of the bars, I want it nice and concentrated where my three rigs are fishing. Now in terms of up baits, veg my bets a little bit. I've got three different colours on. I've got a pink raspberry, a white milky malt, and I've got a yellow PB on. I've tipped them with some maggots, we all know how effective they are. But say, we're using a 12 mil pop-up. For me, the last thing I want to be doing is carrying loads of tubs of up baits around, so those 12 mil pop-ups are really versatile. I'm tipping with probably 15, 20 maggots. I fish it on a D rig as kind of a wafter style, or if I want to fish it on a little Ronnie rig, I can do so. It just means I'm not lumbered with loads of extra hook baits. I've still got multiple different colour options. Now, today, I'll be honest, the conditions haven't been great. A couple of the guys around the lake have been catching on zigs. Now, the sun's starting to drop a little bit. I'm quietly confident the fish will find that bait, and hopefully they'll have a bit of a feed. So I think now there's nothing left to do than have a bit of food and see if any carp will pair for it. Right, so the day's drawn out now, the night's drawn in, and as I said earlier, the conditions haven't been great. It's clear skies, it's really dropping cold tonight. But the conditions tomorrow are looking much more favourable. Now, I've put a little bit more bait out on the spot. I really think that little bit of fresh smell, particularly when you're using liquids, things like that, falling through the water column, if there are any fish spending any time off the bottom, just might give me a little bit of a chance, and maybe the fish, as they're passing over, smelling out the bait and dropping down. If not, as I say, the conditions in the morning looking much more favourable. We'll get some overcast conditions, pressure's dropping a little bit, and it's going to stay a little bit milder tomorrow night. So I'm quietly confident. But for now, me and Clover, as you can see, she's very tired. We get ourselves in bed, and hopefully we'll be interrupted by a car. So the night passed quite uneventfully. It went really still and really clear and the temperature really did drop off now. It would have been ideal zig conditions, but as I say, I'm here to catch them over some bait and I want to build a bit of a hit. Now at first light this morning, just as the sun was creeping up, I had a couple of bites and unfortunately they both fell off. Part and parcel sometimes, there's still a little bit of weed around the features. They've just locked me up and they've both come off, but it's a promising sign, the fish are out there. I did see a few first thing this morning. And during the course of today, the conditions are set to get a lot better. So. I'm confident with a little bit of fresh bait out on the spot, three fresh rigs out there, 
there's more than a good chance of catching a couple of fish today. So what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to run you through what I'm doing with my bait and why I think it's great for the spring fishing. Right, so a couple of hours have passed since I had those two bites this morning. The wind's not really picked up and we've not really got a lot of the cloud cover we were expecting. So I have seen a few fish show out there and I've got a sneaky suspicion they're still spending quite a bit of time right up off the bottom. So on one of my rods, I'm going to chuck a zig out. Now, there's quite a few fish in here, I say they're shoal fish, so I'm quite confident that where there's one, there'll be more. So where we've seen a couple, I'm going to get a zig out there. But first, just before I chuck it out, it's got a little bit of the Milky Malt booster. Just want to flavour up that foam. It's got a little bit more pulling power and obviously it's got a bit more of a food signal as opposed to just a nondescript bit of foam out there. So I'm just going to squeeze a bit of that on there and then squeeze the foam just so it absorbs that flavour. So that'll get down on the lake bed, that'll sit. It's about 12 foot out there. I've set this at 9 foot, so I anticipate being quite up in the water with our bright and it's quite mild today. So that's what she looks like. A couple of drops of that on. It's got a bit more food signal, as I say. I'm going to get that out there. Wind one of the rods in, and swap it round to this. So in the spring, for me, bait, as a lot of the time of the year, is one of your biggest weapons. Most importantly, location is by far and away the most important thing when you're fishing. But for me, your second most important weapon is your bait. Now, when it comes to choosing my bait, I pay a lot of attention to the venue, the depth of the water, and also the conditions. Now, that might sound a little bit strange, but for instance, like where we are today, we're on Hardwick. It's typically deep lake. I'm fishing on the features in the shallower ground, but that's still in 12 foot of water. Now the very typical linear approach, bit fishing, particles, things like that. For me, I'm a little bit conscious that those little particles, when I'm trying to fish nice and tight on a bar, a lot of the time that bait will be moved with the undertow, in the wind, and obviously a lot of the time, probably not landing where we think. So for me, the eight mil bug are absolutely perfect. They're still nice small food items, but they're a lot more dense than particles. So they're gonna travel down nice and fast through the water column and land exactly where the spot's landing. So for me, that's super important, your bait's landing where your rigs are. So to start off with a mix, I use a scoop. Now, it might sound a bit anal, but I know for a fact this scoop is roughly about two and a half spoms. So when I'm making a mix, I don't make a great big bucket, put loads of liquids in and have that last my session. I like to make it up as and when I need it. I think it's by far and away much more effective when it's fresh. And it means I'm not wasting bait unnecessarily. So to start with, I've been probably putting eight to 10 spoms in. So there we go. One scoop, two scoops. Now I know that equates to roughly probably four or five spoms. So that's the kind of the mainstay for my mix is the eight mil bug. The beauty of that is I haven't got to crumb any up. A pet hate of mine is crumbing up loads of boilies and I'm going to waste at the end of the session. And a lot of the time you just end up throwing it in the edge as opposed to taking it home. So the eight mil bug are in there. Now, as you can see, I've got four different liquids here. Now they're all, they've all serving a purpose and it's all for good reason. So first up is the Hydra Spod. This is the bug flavour to complement the baits, and this is lovely and thick. Again, I'm really conscious that with the wind and the undertow, a lot of that smell and those small bits will move off the spot. So this is super heavy and dense, and it'll travel through the water column nice and quick and get down there on the lake bed. So a decent slug of that. Next up is the liquid foam. Now this is a little bit thinner, so this is great for drawing into the baits baits will draw that in. The hydrospod's a little bit thicker, but this is much thinner and the baits will draw it in, just increasing that attraction. So again, I'll match that with the liquid food. Now next up is the beta stim. I mean, you've only got to look on the DNA website just to see how effective this is. It's a really, really good feed stimulant. And for me, things like that, they don't go unnoticed. So I don't go crazy with this. Maybe three or four capfuls. probably eight or ten spots worth of bait so last stop is hemp oil 
in the spring, we all know the fish are spending an awful lot of time up off the bottom. And I want my bait, I want a food signal coming up from the bottom, up to the surface layers, where often the fish will be spending a lot of their time. And there's nothing better, in my opinion, than hemp oil. It's highly refined. And as I say, it'll just keep plinking up to the surface. And any passing fish are going to know there's a bit of bait down there. I don't go mad with this. Just a couple of capfuls. And that makes up the liquids that go in the mix. I'll give that a quick stir. Now next up, I've got a kettle with some boiling lake water in now. For me, having bait, it looks like it's been on the lake bed a little bit longer, particularly on places like Linear, really busy venues. I think the, the softer, the more washed out your bait appears, the more readily the fish will eat it. So it goes without saying, by putting this water on, it'll wash a bit of the goodness out of the baits. But all these liquids now, they'll all pull back into the bait with the aid of this boiling lake water. So a decent dollar put that in there. Again, just so it covers the baits. And as I say, I'll just make it up in batches so I'm not unnecessarily wasting bait. So there's just enough water there to cover those baits. And last up is sweet corn. We all know how much these fish at Linea love sweet corn. They might get caught on loads of yellow hook baits, but I can guarantee you they get away with eating yellow an awful lot more than they get caught on it. So it's fantastic for visual fishing. Again, a lot of the lakes are really clear. And I think when the fish are spending that time off the bottom, it really helps them home in on your bait. So a couple of tins in there. Juices and all. Again, that boiling water is really good for helping those baits draw in all the liquids. A quick stir. Now, it might look really simple, but for me, when fishing venues, particularly they're a little bit deeper in the spring, it's super important that your bait get to the bottom where your spot's landing. So, two tried and tested baits. I'll probably give that half an hour, an hour in the bucket just to soak in all those liquids and it'll be ready to get out on the spot. So I'll give that an hour, as I say, a little bit quiet, but we're kind of getting towards now the afternoon, end of the day, last couple of hours of light and I'm confident. A few more spots out on the spot and a couple of fresh rigs will hopefully be showing you a carp shortly. So today's been very slow. The weather's not really materialised. I've even had a zig on the one rod out there. But for honest, the fish activity slowed right down and nothing's been forthcoming. So I've wound the rods in, get a bit of fresh bait out there. And as I say, tonight it's going to be a lot milder than yesterday. So fingers crossed the carp will pay us a visit. But if not, we'll certainly sit back and enjoy the wonderful sunset. So for the two nights that I've done in this swim, granted we've not smashed them up, we've had four bites in total and only landed two. But if I'm honest, the bite time's been so similar in my head, it's saying that the bite time's really short and sharp and I think the chances are few and far between. So in all honesty, I'm really pleased to have landed two first thing this morning and we've got two lovely scaly Oxford carp to show you.
Right, so there we have it, the first of those two bikes this morning. Not quite the spring car that we were hoping for, but as is often the case in the spring, the weather's really changeable, the conditions have been far from ideal. So I'll take a couple of lovely scaly Oxford fish like this any day of the week. So we'll slip this one back, we'll get the scaly one out to show you. Happy days. Second of those two bites in quick succession this morning. Cracking example of an Oxfordshire scaly carp. Just what we come to linear for. And yeah, what it lacks in size, it certainly makes up for in looks. Now to get this one back, I'm gonna run you through the rigs I've been using to catch a couple of these lovely carp. So for me in the spring, it's all about invisibility. The water's really clear, there's no algae that you get over the course of the summer. When the water's really cold, the carp's eyesight significantly deteriorates, and in the spring, as the water's warming, their eyesight's getting significantly better. So for me, fluorocarbon's absolutely essential. I've got a 25 pound outline fluoro leader on there. It's super tough, sinks really well, and I say it's super robust, and most importantly, invisible. I've got that set up on a helicopter, that's my preference, but as I say, it works equally as well on a lead clip. Got the same 25 pound fluorocarbon from Hook Link. Again, invisible, great anti-tangle properties and it'll reset itself in the event of any nuisance fish picking up my rig or any carp getting away with it. Got a big hook there. These fish fight really hard. It's deep water, as I say, and I'm gonna have to pull hard in some instances. Hook bait wise, as I showed you earlier, I've got a 12 mil PB pop-up and I've got some maggots stitched on there. Now the pop-up, that might sound like it might be too buoyant, but when I couple that with a big hook, and a decent bunch of maggots on the top. I can critically balance that, so it's super balanced. And what that'll mean is my rig's so much more effective. If I've got a wafter on there with a load of maggots on, it would sink quite quickly, and that 12 mil pop-up just allows, as I say, for me to balance it perfectly in the edge, for it to sink nice and slow, and ultimately my fit rig will be nice and effective. Lead-wise, I've got a big lead, I've got a four ounce of there. I'm fishing over 80 yards, so I need a bit of weight out there, and ultimately, when I've got any tow, I don't want my lead moving. Just got that set up there on a heavy ring. A Little bit of PVA and a weak link. So again, I could drop the lead. There's quite a bit of weed out there. I lost my first fish because I didn't drop the lead. So after losing those couple of fish, I've started dropping the lead and I've landed the last two bites. So there you have it, super simple and super effective. Right, so that looks like the last of the action. The morning's drawing on. The conditions are getting increasingly worse. The sun's getting high in the sky, and we're great with bright blue skies. So I think we're gonna call it a day now. Now we might have only landed the two fish. We managed four bites in all. Those tactics, I'm sure if the conditions were a little bit more favorable, we'd have got amongst quite a few fish, and we'd have had a nice little hit. But it's not always meant to be. So the conditions have been against us a little bit, but more than happy with those two lovely carp. Now, if you want to employ the same tactics and bait that I've been using on this session, it's worth noting that the DNA baits now is available in the Linear Fisheries shop, so be sure to check it out for yourselves. Mm -hmm.